Hey guys, it's Matt for Ant Hero Magazine, and I'm joined by Ash and Ross from Abhorrent Decimation. Hello. Howdy doody. How the hell are you guys? How are you doing? Yeah, very good. We just uh, basically came on stage about, what, about an hour ago or something? Yeah, buzzing. All good, all good. Yeah, still coming down from it a little bit. Yeah, how, a how was that set? Well, I managed to catch about 15 minutes of it before I had to disappear for an interview. It, was very, um, it, it went very well. Yeah, we were really happy. We were, you know, the turnout was great, um, better than we were expecting, and... We think we played well. It's really hard for us to gauge now because we're all on in ears, oh, okay. so we don't we don't hear anything. You know, we just have to trust that everyone else is doing their yeah, job. How you doing? But you're just sort of like relying on everyone else to do the same thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know I played awesome. Yeah, but we, we got we got down. We had a good time. It was all good. Glad to hear it, man. You are hot off your debut album, The Pardoner, which came out a couple of weeks ago. That's right, with yeah. Prosthetic Records. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, I understand the album's based off of uh, the, the Pardoner's Tale from. Uh, Canterbury Tales. Correct, yeah, Correctus what, Maximus, yeah. yeah. Why did you want to go to that, of all places, for, for the album? A, a super long story cut short, we were uh, playing around with ideas for the next record, and I wanted to do something uh, about the plague, yeah. uh, and the Black Death and all that, and uh, we went out touring, uh, we were at the end of the album cycle for our last record, mm. and um, we met a band called The Infernal Sea. And they were touring a record they just put out that was about the Black Death and the Plague. Oh, excellent! So I went, oh <laughs> shit, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> but I really liked, I really enjoyed the, the era, the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, dug a bit deeper into it all. And then I, we, you know, I, I wanted to do something about a pilgrimage, a journey, and have the record be the journey, you know. Mm. And then a friend of mine, uh, you know, he's a bit of an oracle. We just uh, were chatting one. I worked with him. We were just chatting at lunchtime. Uh, and he, he said, oh, I'll bring a couple of books in for you tomorrow. And he brought a couple of the tales from the Canterbury Tales, mm. and one about medieval pilgrimage. And The Pardoner was the first one I read, and I was just like, this is, this is amazing. I'm just, I'm just going to go with this. Yeah, yeah it's brilliant, because I get loads of flashbacks to A-level English when I had to yeah. sit down and just read. I didn't care for it. You know, when, when we yeah. had it on our um, like this curriculum, you know, when it was yeah, yeah, compulsory, yeah. I didn't care for it. I couldn't tell you anything about Chaucer, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, going back through it and having this time round, having to, you know, understand it, transcribe it, make lyrics from its story, yeah, yeah, yeah. try and do justice to the absolute, you know, G that is Chaucer, you know, and it was real hard work. So yeah, it was yeah. hard. And the partner is an absolute in the in the tale. He's an absolute lecherous bastard. Yeah, he's not nice. So did did you find that that character lended itself really well to like extreme tech death metal? I think that was it. Yeah, because once I'd read it and broken it down, I was just like, this is this is just a perfect death metal record. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, in like, he, he's someone. He's a religious fraud. He's acting as if he's employed by the church to pardon you for your sins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he you know, he preaches against avarice. Yet that's what keeps him alive. Yeah, and pretty much. Yeah. It's just that. You know, these themes these themes are prevalent in metal, aren't they? The hypocrisy of religion and all yeah, this sort of stuff, yeah. the false nature of it all. But this is done in a slightly more sophisticated, uh, esoteric way, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You heard it here first, Chaucer is metal as fuck. Cha yeah. Chaucer is the, the all-time <laughs> metal G, he's the OG. <laughs> so with all those concepts like corruption and avarice like we were talking about, yeah, yeah. do you think that the record could apply just as well like to medieval times as it could today, because obviously those are still present today. Definitely, definitely. If you think about, I mean, I don't want to go into any like conspiracy theories, but you think about when you know what the Pardoner's Tale was all about, everything like that, mm. and you apply that to all of, obviously not the Illuminati, but people like that, all the like sort of stuff that we'll never really know about, mm. it applies directly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. loads of people will probably, that's a good thing about literature as well, people read into it so deep. And I think you can definitely read into all of the lyrics in the partner and sort of apply them into different contexts, yeah. And are you guys quite, uh, I guess, clued in or interested in like the modern political scape and all that? Because it's like Game of Thrones at the moment. Yeah, no, dude, we're, we're, I don't think that's one thing I'm ever going to talk about, uh, politics. Fair enough, fair enough, man. Like as in within our records, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like... It's as, it's as useful as talking about religion. Do you yeah, know what I mean? You, you don't like, want to divide the fan base as well. Well, divide the fan base, and also like I don't speak for the other guys. I speak for myself, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't care for politics at all, man. I'm I'm all about just living my own life, and you know if the tax goes up, I'll pay it, and if the law comes in, I'll abide it. I don't really care, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just here to be happy, live, be creative, and just get on with it. I don't care. I probably don't care. I'm not disengaged. I understand what's going on, but I don't. Again, going to Lenny's conspiracy theories, but just like, 
I kind of don't feel it matters. Yeah, you know, no, we're, yeah. we're not in control. Yeah, fair enough. All you got to do is control your own little piece of life. Yeah, so that's definitely Once a good Start from there and then worry about yeah. the other shit, do you know what I mean? And I remember, I think it was early last year, I saw you guys at the Annihilation Festival in Southampton. Oh, okay. It was a really small festival. I think you were third from top. Yeah, yeah. Here you are, just over a year later, you're playing the second stage of fucking Bloodstock. Yeah. Getting a, a great crowd. So, has it been a really crazy year for you guys? Uh, things have things have naturally floated a bit higher since we signed Prosthetic, I think. Yeah. We've just gone out to a bigger audience, and I think a lot of our... A lot of our fan, fan base has been with us since the start. You know, we we had a lot of interest early on, and the fans have grown with us. And you know, it, yeah, it's getting better every time we go out. Every tour's better. We're, it's getting bigger. We're selling more merch. We're fucking. We're playing to bigger crowds. People are showing up. They know the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not having to tell them. They know it. I can hold the mic out. They get on with it. You know, people are air guitar in Ross's solos. You know what I mean? It's just like it's it's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of weird, especially when you're like. It puts almost a bit more pressure when people know it so well. When you're an unknown band, you know, it's a little bit you can go under the radar, but whereas you when can someone screw up can literally away like it. can hum your solo air guitar, you're like, right, okay. Yeah. Front three rows back, this kid knows everything. Yeah. So Pre pressure's on yeah, now. Yeah, pressure's on. <laughs> and one of my favourite parts about your music as well is that look you add in loads of symphonic elements as like yeah. kind of like interludes in yep. the record. So w when did that start to be added in to the band sound? Well, our bass player David Archer he wrote and produced a, he produced the album single handedly but he wrote a line huge line share of the material and we wanted to tell a story you know that we were we were all about doing the concept the biggest justice possible um, and you know none of that's fake that's real cello that's real yeah, violin yeah. that's real piano he painstakingly smashed all of that you know he had to learn to play the cello to do the intro to the album and you know it's like Bands don't do that anymore. They get plugins and they just do it on a keyboard. It'd be really easy to do it in like the sort of modern musician way of just getting, yeah, paying for the plugin or finding a plugin and just doing it. But yeah, yeah. you know, we were in for a penny and for a pound with this one. We just sort of took it to the top that we could do at the time. So you know, having those real instruments, everyone's saying, you know, you know that cello at the start of uh, track one, two, say they're just like that sounds amazing. And you know, the reason is just because it's real instruments. So it was million percent worth the, uh, the extra mile. We didn't have to do anything. Archer did it all. <laughs> yeah, let's do real cello. Just, yeah, go on, just learn to play that. Yeah. Oh. You do all the work with that. That's yeah. Fine. yeah, yeah. Um, my favourite part of the entire record is the title track at the end. Like, yeah. Almost 10 minutes of extreme, symphonic, tech death metal. Yeah. So how long did it take you to finalise that absolute monster of a song? Right, so... I mean, I'll take it and say, oh yeah, it took ages, but actually, if you, you can divide the song into two parts. Yeah. So you have the sort of, you know, the, the full band arrangement that's about five, four and a half minutes, five minutes. Yeah. That's the song that was written. That was actually one of the, the main riff when you come into that song. That was one of the first riffs Archer had down. Mm -hmm. And we loved it so much that we wanted it to be like the centerpiece, you know, the, the, the sort of the punchline of the album. Um, but the outro, the symphonic outro is actually the chorus of every single song backwards. Yeah. Reverse chronological, yeah. So it's um, so that actually sounds way more complicated than it is. Right. And it sounds really laborious, and it kind of is. But it's it's the chorus of every song you've just heard. Oh wow! And okay. Played, transferred. You know, once you reach the end of that, it actually starts from track one again. It goes in a perfect loop. Oh wow! So that's the last brilliant. Note of I the didn't know that. Note goes no. into the first note. So because we had a lot of people who were like thought it was really weird that the album ends boop, like it proper cut short. Yeah, it just cuts. Yeah. If you actually put the album on repeat, it loops seamlessly. Right, okay. Because we wanted, we didn't want to put that, that's like a secret unlock level, you know? Because <laughs> some people, when they get it on digital platform and they listen on the laptop, you can press repeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone press repeat, they're going to have known that already. We, some people have got it. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. that doesn't transpose well to vinyl. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. the vinyl can't go around again, you've got no, to turn it over. Got, but, yeah, yeah. Sort it out. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, but it's cool, it's cool. Yeah, yeah. And one last question before we wrap up. But, um, Abhorrent Decimation, one of the standouts of the London extreme tech scene, you've also got bands like Brutai and Exist Immortal in that scene. How cool does it feel that London finally has like its own awesome prog scene going on? I, th I think it's cool, man. I think oh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there, there's a lot of bands, there's a lot of fans. There's a great, there's a great scene and there's also, it also needs a bit more help, but it's just, yeah. uh, it's great, man. There's gigs on all the time. Just yeah. go out there, catch a show, like you know. Everyone support London Prog because it's about time we 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 got our own scene in the UK. Let's do it. Definitely go see Bruto. I love Bruto. Definitely, yeah. they're they're good lads. Fucking ace. Yeah. Love to Bruto. 
Also, love to these guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, for Thank you. standing up and chatting with me today. Everyone, go and buy the pardon there. It's an ace fucking record. Brutal as all hell. Until then, Ash and Ross. Thank you.